This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. It's First Aid with Kelly Kincaid. All right, Sway in the morning, Shade 4-5. Uh, my family just walked in the building, Kelly Kincaid. Yes, and, absolutely. And I always tell people, say, who were some of your early inspirations to get into this music business? Also, Russell Simmons. Russell Simmons. I wanted to be him, do everything he did. I respected um, um, his knowledge. I respected his hustle and in uh, his hood and the way he communicated. He's, Russell was trilingual. He spoke hood, he spoke English, and he spoke corporate languages, all in the same in the same person. And here he is uh, with us today, the legendary, iconic, but down to earth, good friend Yogi himself, Russell Simmons, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, good morning. Russ, how you doing, man? I'm it's, good, baby. It's Kelly I'm, Kincaid. I'm good. I'm, I feel home. I just left uh, IMAS in the morning, so you niggas. Fuck with y'all is. Huh? He told me he was uh, voting for Trump. He's a good guy though. He's a vegan, and he got. Well, he's down. He's down for a division. He wants to uh, live in a country divided. Or you know, he it? said it's good content, which was crazy. I, I was amazed he said that. But good content. But he mostly, you know, much people don't like him. I get on his show, and I find him to be compassionate and smart. And he's the one that's called the girls a nappy headed. Yeah, home. he said that. Yeah. Shit. He yeah. caught a tremendous brick for that. But niggas say wrong things all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He apologized like 300 times, so whatever. Yeah, yeah. Give him a pass. Is he vegan? Yeah, he, well, yeah, he is a vegan, a vegan which was kind of uh, shocking to me. And he's had me on uh, his show twice to talk about the same book, so. Hey, um, well, is he always a vegan? He's been uh, for a long time. Like, he also held a farm sanctuary where he takes care of animals and all that. You know, a good, compassionate person. Yeah, he's ruining meals. But, yeah. he, but <laughs> funny thing, he said he supported Trump because of the content. Because like content. he likes having them on the show. Go on the wall. That was kind of a, a So he's small... an advocate of building the wall, huh? He wants to build the wall? I don't know what the fuck Trump might say tomorrow. He might say that if the British were next door, he'd build a wall. And then niggas would give him a pass. I mean, yeah. I just worry about his candidacy. Uh -huh. As much as we know right now, he's like the best thing to run against. Yeah. At the same time, I feel like he's going to flip on all those conservatives. He's going to start saying shit. And a lot of niggas will forget what he said. Yeah. Hopefully women will never forget what he said. Yeah. And we'll, you know, have a landslide. But you know, he's capable. You know, he speaks the language; people digest it. You know, so. So you you've been advocate you've been advocate mostly of Bernie. Is Bernie your guy? I've been no, I've been a big supporter of Bernie. Yeah. And his uh and his uh, his policy ideas, and the same as I supported Dennis Kucinich every time he ran for president, uh -huh. uh, and even John Edwards, who talked about poverty a lot. John you know, Edwards was the one that was had the affair. Yeah, yeah, but okay. for a moment, I took him. To, I mean, I spent a lot of time with him because. He announced in the hood, you know, in in, in um, New Orleans. He did a lot of really good things and talked about poverty in ways that candidates never use the word poverty. Or they never use poor as a word. You know, they just don't discuss it. And he talked a lot about policies uh, around changing the dynamics in, in uh, the poor the communities, underserved communities. Mm -hmm. So I do that always early, and then I end up supporting the candidate who might get it done. And and I you know I got a real brick from a lot of my fans friends I don't have fans but friends and and supporters yeah and, because I ended up choosing Hillary and I did that because I believe for her the prison industrial complex is a legacy issue yeah for her the um, the minimum wage is a legacy issue for her a lot of the things and I even talked to her about the greatest lobby and the most damaging lobby which we're going to get into is the factory farming industry uh -huh. that we spend forty billion American dollars taxpaying our money to underwrite the poisoning of the planet and its inhabitants. Mm -hmm. There is no great, you can't have the Pope can do whatever the fuck he wants, uh, excuse my language, but he can have Bernie and they can all talk about climate change and without it mentioning the factory farming industry, you're not mentioning the number one cause of global warming. Uh, uh -huh. Right? So the poisoning of the planet is the factory farming industry and it, you know, and, and so you have to recognize that. It's cow poop that's what it is. I mean, even the, the, the UN reports say that. So we're going to talk about that in a minute. But yeah. so I kind of I love Bernie. I love his compassion. I love his his pulling the, the whole party to a more progressive stance on many issues. Yeah. But I believe there's 400 legislators that do take money. And just because you don't take money doesn't mean you can influence them. And when you see Hillary, when she's giving her victory speech, you see the entire Democratic establishment standing next to her. And what you're going to need to, to, to really enact change is a support system, yeah. mm -hmm. both Republicans and Democrats. You have a Republican House, and you've got to be able to influence them, and you have to be able to negotiate to move some of the, the, the needle. Right. 
Yeah. So obstructionists have hurt Obama, but I can't imagine what they would do to him. And so I just, in the end, I, I made a practical decision, having known Washington for more years than a lot of the Bernie supporters have been alive. Yeah. But you know, talk so about that's just the, my opinion. Yeah. So I, I got a real brick for that. I don't mind. I'm always in trouble. I, I, I stay in trouble. You yeah, know, I, I, I think people are not aware of, of your political investment when you said having, you know, making more trips to Washington than most of his supporters have been alive. What kind of things, if you can briefly tell us? Well, I changed the Rockefeller. I got the pen. I didn't change it alone. 100,000 yeah. people came out. You were there. Yeah, I was there. 100,000 people came out and all the artists from Jay and Puffy and, you know, the Wu-Tang and Beastie Boys and a lot of people, Hillary Clinton, uh, Susan Sarandon, uh, lots of people came out and we rallied and we changed the Rockefeller drug laws. Mm -hmm. After we changed it and thousands of people came home from jail, the next governor, we lobbied again and we fought again, and the next governor, and it was very difficult again, but uh, Patterson, the governor, then abolished the Rockefeller drug laws, and, it, and now it became up to the judges to decide rather than mandatory minimums. So th that's one of the many you know, things that I've really invested my time in. We just recently got the governor, who I supported, uh, I, I didn't support Pataki when he made the first change in the Rockefeller drug laws, uh -huh. but the governor, Cuomo, put special prosecutors. It was because of the marching of Justice, uh, uh, Black Lives Matter and the Justice League and others, but we negotiated to get a special prosecutor in cases where people are shot uh, by, by law enforcement without, who, who don't have guns. Yeah. So we, we got that. We have a special prosecutor in the state of New York. And that's, you know, that's politics. It's not always just idealism. Mm -hmm. There's there's a lot of lobbying. I had to call a lot of people. Just, you know, you have to call people and move one politician at a time to vote in your favor. And I think that's what Hillary may be more skilled to do. And that's why I made that choice. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm to the left of Bernie. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so my personal politics had nothing to do with what I think may be more positive for our community right. you know, in terms of choice. So. Like yeah, I remember that too when we were rallying for the uh, change to Rockefeller drug laws. And and, and, and we it, got it done. And we got it done. And then I remember um, Summer Jam, I can't think of what year it was, 04 maybe, 05, 04. And, and I was over at the other uh, station and Russell, I don't know if you remember this, but uh, uh, I was going out to introduce an act or something and you and Tracy Clordy came and said, hey, man, you got to tell them about the, the drug laws. We went up with Rockefeller drug laws. We're holding a rally in the whole nine. And I went out there. I was like, man, this is Russell Simmons, man. Whatever Russell says, I'm going to do. And right. I went on the stage right, and right. I'm like, yo, man, we got to talk about this Rockefeller drug laws. And Russell Simmons, blah, 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 blah. Well, you know what? Uh, I got booed by 50,000 people. That, I don't remember that. Yeah, but nothing, listen, nothing has destroyed the black community more. <laughs> nothing has changed the fabric of the black community more than the mass incarceration of, of, of innocent, diseased people, educating yeah. them in criminal behavior and dumping them back in the hood without hope. Mm -hmm. That changed our church culture to jail culture. That's why the mm -hmm. rappers mm -hmm. say what they say, because, like, what do you say? Well, you've been up north, son, you got muscles. Uh, you're the yeah. hero in the community, and that culture became the culture of the community right. in some places. You know, it changed us. Mm -hmm. And um, we have to reverse that mass incarceration. And I, and I think that's one of the, the key issues for black people, certainly, uh, since when we changed the Rockefeller drug laws, 94% of the people in jail under those laws, even though whites and blacks use and sell drugs at the same rate, were people of color. 94%. Wow. Wow. So, you know, th this is something that affects our community deeply and, and, it, and uh, I believe that Hillary can negotiate with Republicans who already believe that $60,000 a head per jail per prisoner is a waste of our taxpaying dollars. Mm -hmm. So he, she has to get it passed. I don't want the obstructionists to hate our president so much. Although I don't think there's a chance in hell he could be president, but because the money they would throw at him, the money they would throw at him would be unbelievable. They yeah. would call him a socialist. They would claim that he, so just now he can easily fare okay until he was the nominee, but he's yeah. not. So anyway, I, I just want to you talk about that because I've been attacked so much about it. Yeah. And I'm going to keep, you know, I'm always going to be attacked. So I live for that. But, you know. Yeah. Well, thank you. And Russell Simmons is here, man. We want to talk about the Happy Vegan as well as the book by Russell Simmons. And people saying if you turn vegan, if the world was vegan, it would be a better place. 
and we'll tell you why up next. You want to speak with Russell, 888-742-3345. That's right. we got Russell Simmons joining us this morning. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, 888-742-3345. You want to talk to Russell Kelly? Yes. You know, today, Russell, thank you for coming today. Um, I've been really uh, – loving reading your book because switching over to vegan is something that I kind of wrestle with because I've done a 23 day vegan challenge, which was cool, but I had a lot of questions. So I'm glad that you're here and I want to just talk about it. We all know your love for yoga because we've had a conversation about it, but your transition to being a vegan, tell us about that. Well, it's been almost 20 years, but I, I did it for compassion because at first, if you think about all the scripture, I don't care which one, there's a, there are passages about animals and the treatment of animals. For instance, uh, there's 100 billion animals made to be born into suffering every year through the worst practices possible, through rape, through whatever you can think of. And then they're given growth hormones and antibiotics and Prozac and a lot of other stuff and even new stuff now with the super salmon. And that is a carcinogen to people and poisonous and we have diabetes. There are whole towns that are obese. And 20... No, 50% of African-American women over 20 have heart disease. The cholesterol only comes from animal product. 50% of black women over 20 have some form of heart disease. So that's health. And I, and I leaned very heavy on health because I thought that's what people care about. The abuse of animals is a different issue, but I, and I talk about that some. But then there's also the fact that the number one cause of global warming Mm. is the manufacturing of animals. And here we are, the American government, government giving $40 billion to underwrite the poisoning of our children and then to, to animal products and to the manufacturing of animal products to supplement our food, but only $17 million or 0.4% to vegetables. Mm. So we just opened a, uh, and I helped the church in Flint open a nutrition center in a food desert. We have food deserts in the hood all over. Well, you can't find vegetables. You know, a whole city of Flint, Michigan, there were no vegetables. So we built a pop-up shop that has vegetables. But the point is, there's vegetable, there's plant-based diets. Like, I'm, I eat only plants mm -hmm. for yeah. 20 years. I don't feel sick. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't feel sick. Do I look, like, much worse than I did Yeah, you have 25, an age. 30 you have an age. Right. No. So, yeah. so I don't eat animal product, and I feel good, you know? And I think there's a lot of now new products People are studying the 40,000 plants and creating uh, competitive products that don't take 2,700 gallons of water for your hamburger. The amount of water, the amount of natural resource, the amount of oil, mm -hmm. the amount of grain that go into, and they're poisoning children, taking the, the, the food out of their mouth to feed animals. Now, there, are, there are children, there are 10,000 children a day that you could blame the manufacturing of animals on the reason that they're starving. Mm -hmm. So there's a, you know, there's a lot of good reasons. But greed and, and corporations run this country, yeah. which speaks back to, to the issue of cor uh, Citizens United or corporations investing or why I occupied Wall Street. It's money. Mm -hmm. That is paying our politicians. You give a politician a dollar, he'll give you a billion. You know what I found interesting? This week, discoverynews.com wrote an article envisioning a vegan-only world. And they gave a couple of facts, but I wanted to just state this for everyone who's listening. Currently, the percentage of people around the globe who are vegetarians are low. India tops the list with 35% of the population eating mostly vegetarian. Then for second is Italy, Great Britain, Germany tied for, like I said, second with 9%. The Netherlands, U.S., Canada only have 4% of people who are vegetarians. Austria, Switzerland are 3%, and France came at the bottom of 10. And, you know, I think a lot of people, for me, going on the vegan challenge, because being a vegan is no animal products. That's dairy, anything that if they you got, had a parent. They got rice cheese, soy cheese, cashew nut cheese, almond cheese. They right. got uh, diet and cheese. There's so many kinds of cheese you can melt on your veggie burger and so many kinds of chili and and, and alternative beef products that go on your beef chili that goes on your onion, guacamole, chili burger with cheese. I mean, I don't, I don't see why that's... You know, and you can do that at home, and you can save money being vegan. True. So it's so it's it's, it, it's just like you can save unconscious money behavior. behavior. Yes, you can. Eating at home. Yeah, you oh, can. Eating at home. But eating cooking home. vegan diets. Yeah, you can. You can make a lentil loaf with onions and and if, you know, and the people say it's hard to find vegan food. I mean, you can go to Taco Bell 
and have a gua- and have a, a bean burrito with guacamole instead of hot clog and cheese. Well, I like the art of uh, the chapter you do. How do you do it? Because a lot of people feel being a vegetarian and vegan is expensive. Now you are you. I think you're in a different I eat out. tier. I probably waste. I probably waste a lot of money in in expensive vegan restaurants. I mm-hmm. probably do. But I'm saying it is it is very easy to go on a plant based diet in most parts of this country. And again, you can go to a Chinese restaurant and have curry tofu with with onions and peppers and broccoli, American broccoli, not Chinese broccoli, and spinach. And you can put it over brown rice, you know, and it's easy. You know, it's easy a lot more than uh, people think. So I just want to promote your, that to what's people. What's your success stories for some of your friends who were big meat, eat, meat eaters that ate steak as far as transferring? Because there's people who like chicken wings, steak, uh, pork chops. Like, how did that, that transition? Because I think a lot of people in their head the is like, thing, how do we move? The big thing you have to remind them of uh, uh, is that they're going to die. I'm sorry. That's the best thing I say. Say, yo, nigga, I'm, I'm saying, but for real, you're on your way out. Yeah. You know, you know, you should live to 100, and yeah. you, you're not. You know, you're going, you're going to catch some kind of a problem, the diabetes and the heart disease and and the, the obesity real. and all that. You're going to die. And I think people are, you know, selfish. You know, selfishly, they say, you know, I don't want to fuck. I don't want to check out yet, right. and I want to be healthy. You know, so these these are the first. That's the first thing. I mean, they get. Like you, t- you mentioned chicken. The amount of antibiotics, they, they, what they did was they put them in such close quarters and it's yeah. so violent, it's, yeah. you know, they cut their beaks off, which it's, is like cutting your arm off. It's torture. It feels like right. that. Yeah. Right. But they're in this close quarters, so what they did was give them Prozac. And the Prozac worked. They put them to sleep. They didn't kill each other. They just sat in the dark and quietly got <laughs> stuffed with growth hormones and shit, and they, they got big enough, and then you ate them along with the other shit that's in them to make them grow fast too. Mm-hmm. What they discovered is that the Prozac makes them grow even fatter faster, which means... <laughs> stuff them with Prozac and there's no regulation on that so they just stuff a lot of Prozac along with a lot of antibiotics which also makes them swollen and fat and I give them all of this shit and they give it to you and you know and nowhere in the world do they allow factory farms to do what they do to the animal product we eat here in America in other words when you get to to England or France or any other places and you look at the chicken and say well damn this is a tiny little piece of chicken it's normal yeah it's not legal in Austria, it's not legal in, it's not even legal in China and Russia to give you this food. And then they also have to label the GMOs in those places. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the industries have paid our government to poison us and mm-hmm. to poison the planet. Mm-hmm. More American factory farming than anywhere in the world. Russell Simmons is here. The book is The Happy Vegan. Wonder, you had a question for him? I got three quick ones. Why do vegans or even vegetarians try to emulate meat foods with vegan like a veggie burger or something like that why are people so obsessed with meat size second question do you feel like you lost your carnal desire you know what i'm saying you these wisdom i mean these canine teeth right here that were, were meant to Them have teeth fan you can't Th- bite third, into nothing living nigga. but one. i mean i'm gonna answer all three okay. questions though. Third one, why people's breath stink they're usually vegans <laughs> for the majority of it you know what i'm saying i've noticed that a lot their breath stinks yeah niggas always it used to be that why <laughs> it used to be why all vegans look sickly yeah do i look sickly no, i'm look, 112 you're glowing all right uh, my girl don't tell me my breath stink. I mean, I don't know. Maybe she don't know no better. She's thirty years younger than me, and I'm and I'm handling my business. Wow. I don't think she ever wakes up feeling like I didn't get fucked. Oh. Ever? Oh. ever? So okay. So <laughs> yeah, I'm, shit, just saying, I'm, just, I'm sorry. I'm on the way. Second, first thing you said was what was the first thing? Because that was a real right. Of trying to emulate. Oh yeah, meat because dishes. niggas been eating meat their whole life. I, right. I eat chitlins. I eat pig feet. So I don't mind getting the chicken parmesan. Um, and spaghetti bolognese meal out of you know one of the vegan restaurants. You know what I mean? And and I'd give it to you, and you'd be like, oh shit, chicken parmesan. So you're used to it. Uh, and even after 20 years of being vegan or 18 years of being vegan, I still like playing with that. You know what I mean? I still don't mind going to the Thai restaurant that makes everything you fish and and chicken and beef and everything you can imagine, but it's all made out of pea protein or soy or whatever the choices they make. I like that. It's okay. I'm used to it. What about your carnal desire? And you desire? will be too, by the way. You are not going to eat. You might not want to eat just, you know, stir, stir fried spinach and onions and peppers. You know, I do a lot. You might not want that. You might want a burger with chili and cheese on it. So that's why we make it for you, you know, okay. so that you can change. We got so some. Because you, you take up 400 times the amount of earth than a vegan. Your, your hamburger is 2,700 gallons of water. Nigga, I can take a lot of showers for your hamburger. Don't tell me to take a short shower. Yeah. Don't tell me to get an electric car when you're destroying the planet. 
So either and, and 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 you're taking my tax dollar to underwrite your meat. So I'm saying that's you know the, the perception. They spend a lot of time mm-hmm. promoting, and since they're such a they have a trillion dollar industry, it's it's easy for them to come up with good fun reasons to make you feel like you're doing the right thing. It was good and easy to to turn your back when they put people in ovens. It was good and easy when we do unconscious horrible things as humanity. And I think. The 100 billion animals that are made to be born into suffering through all kinds of rape and any other factory practices is the worst comic disaster in the history of the world, mm-hmm. reenacted every year, and it gets worse. So, you know, we, none of y'all niggas can't choke a chicken, much less be responsible for 10,000 uh, animals dying, you know, uh, because of you. Russell Simmons is here, the happy vegan is the name of the book. Tashera is on the line from Sacramento, California. What up, Tashera? Hey. <laughs> I love you. I love you, Clay. I love your show. Thank you. I'm listening to it on the way to my organic chemistry class because I'm studying to be a dietitian. Okay. And I really wanted to ask uh, Russell what he thought about the pescatarian diet. What's wrong with eating fish? Well, um, one, the I- sea creatures are being swept out of the ocean. You know, when they when they go to get fish out of the ocean, they, they put a net, 300-foot net, and say they're looking for one kind of fish. All the other fish that get caught in the net, they throw it away. It dies. They're sweeping the ocean mm-hmm. clean, and before you know it, in 50 years, mm-hmm. they say one of the oceans will be dead. When the ocean dies, we die. That's first. Okay. Secondly, there's so much poison in the ocean today that the fish you're eating is really poison. And then the problem with the factory farming mm-hmm. fish, for instance, the super salmon, the, you know, the president resisted forever this idea of super salmon. Mm-hmm. I mean, it has mm-hmm. more antibiotics in it than anything yeah. is in the salmon. But on top of that, the growth hormones and now this new product that they put in the fish to make it super salmon, it is already linked to cancer. So there's a lot of really serious problems with fish. The only small fish is like sand, like you could have uh, sardines or whatever. Yeah. That's not as... Uh, dangerous as all the mercury and the other shit that's in fish. So eating too much fish, you will be huh? Freshwater fish, like freshwater a, fish, and like when we can find fresh water if you can in the ocean, and you know, good good luck. <laughs> no, I mean like in um, a freshwater lakes. You could, you know, there, you know, it's it's not as dangerous, of course, and and you know, the fish oil itself is good for you. Yeah, and and it's okay. I don't um I don't recommend it. Um, but I know you can eat it, and it's not if you're worried about your personal health. Yeah. It's not as terrible as the other shit, obviously. We got Anthony but, on the line. Um, good Anthony, good morning. What's your question? Anthony, oh, what's up, man? Say oh, hello to Russell. What up? What's, what's good, Russell? What's popping, brother? All right. What's your question? Um, Go I ahead. To, uh, I, I live a healthy lifestyle, right? I try to work out, do all that good stuff. I'm against non-GMO foods 120%. Why is the only candidate that's running for president that's against non-GMO food, Bernie Sanders? Uh, Bernie Sanders has got a lot of really, really good ideas. And in fact, I, I agree with him on pretty much every single thing that's ever come out of his mouth. Mm-hmm. Um, I just don't know how he's going to move Republicans and even his Democrats to support him on a lot of the issues. I think that as people are educated, then uh, politicians follow suit. In other words, they can walk around and say that that um, global warming is not man-made all day until it's so proven and it's such a fact that then they stop saying it. You got to move away from lobbyists when they, when they get disproved. So you know, amongst the masses. Yeah. And so Bernie Sanders is saying he's against GMOs. Um, Hillary has said it as well. You know, I had a conversation with him about. It. I only had one conversation with these. And, I, and Hillary, I've known forever. I gave her first fundraiser. Yeah. I didn't talk to nobody when I endorsed, except I had one brief conversation. I'm sorry with Bernie. And I said, since I knew everything he stood for, I said, what are you saying about the scariest lobby in the world? It's the factory farming industry, what they're doing to, not to black people is prison industrial complex, but, but in general, what's destroying the planet is the factory farming industry. He says, I support the farmers. And you call me 50,000 times, I finally picked the phone up I, and call you back and, and you tell me you support the farmers. I said, but no, but they're destroying the planet and they're poisoning the people. They're good for pharmaceutical industry, but for yeah. people, it's bad. And he says, I support. And then his wife goes on TV and said, we like our beef and pork, and Russell only cares about beef and pork. No, I care about black people. I care about poor people. I care about a lot of things. I only asked him, since he especially was going on, I have to make a speech. He was very dismissive. I don't mind 
personally how he took, treated me. I only minded that he, for a person who doesn't take money, you haven't said one thing about this abusive industry. Mm -hmm. And so he went to the Vatican to talk about global warming, but he never mentioned the factory farming industry. Why are you there if you're not going to talk about the, the elephant in the room? Yeah. So I, I, I like him. I love him, what he stands for. I love what he's done to the party. I love what he's done to Hillary to make Hillary a better candidate. And I just don't think he would be capable of moving Congress to actually affect the kind of change that we need. Russell Simmons, the book is The Happy Vegan. Uh, man, hit up Russell on social media, man, if you want to continue this conversation. Russ, give out your social media, man. Oh, but I got to say one thing before I break out, because I haven't said one business thing. I announced yesterday that All Deaf Digital is doing a Snoop Dogg roast. We're going right, to honor yes. and smoke out Snoop. You know, and honor him as well, because what he does in the hood, like he always says, I'm a crypt till I die, and no one really gets that. A lot of people, I live in L.A., a lot of people say I'm a crypt till I die, or I'm, you know, I'm a blood... They mean I'm a mailman and I go home and I love my family. You know, that's what they mean. That's what he means. Mm -hmm. And people don't know him. I want to really expose him. When, when is it you know going to We're going to make fun of him, but yeah. we're going to expose him. Where we would it live? We don't have a date. They, all the networks are fighting over it. They all want to pick a date. So we mm -hmm. announced it. You know, I find that in Hollywood. Like, white people don't really like us or really get us culturally. Mm -hmm. And they're in charge of every single thing. <laughs> they don't dislike us. They just don't get us. So I found, like, when I did the All Deaf Movie Awards, I just said, fuck y'all, I'm making it. And then they all fought over it. And yeah. then four days before it aired, I sold it. So I, going and pitching a Snoop Roast would have been like, I got to go suck dick and beg and all. I said, no, you know what? I'm announcing it. I'm making the motherfucker anyway. And yeah. now they're all fighting And, and that wouldn't be vegan if you suck dick. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm not <laughs> right. <laughs> My man, Russell Simmons. Thanks for pointing man. that out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, we will promote. But I'm not that, against. Man. We all do whatever. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Especially well, girls, guys too. Do whatever. Yeah. Before we end, Sway, I just wanted to tell people to pick up this book, The Happy Vegan. If you're really kind of tussling on switching over to vegetarian or vegan, and also check out two um, uh, documentaries. You saw the Diet for a New America. Yes. That's the one that changed your life. Yeah, that's uh, an that's old a, one. Yeah, there's a PBS and Food Inc. Yeah, oh, they're both great. You know, one yeah. more I want to mention because it scared the shit out of you. And uh, I mean, you have a, you got you should watch Earthlings. Okay. Because okay. then you'll never eat animal. You'll be like Jesus. Yeah, you so, know. Yeah. We'll yeah. put it all up on Sway's Universe if you want to you follow so me. Much. Thank Absolutely, you. Russell. Thank you for Come on, man. Thank you, Russ. My Appreciate pleasure, you, man. Always, oh, man. God Good bless to you. see you, man. God bless you. Uh, up next, Ilana Glazer. A lot of you guys know her from Broad City. She's on a new movie, The Time Traveling Bomb. All right, you want to talk with us? A new mini series. Eight 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 seven four two three three four five. It's Sway in the morning Only on Shade 45 Kill <laughs>